last video will be on ecological succession. There are two different types, there's primary and there's secondary. Primary occurs when there is no soil. So for instance, if a volcano erupted and then um, left behind lava that solidified into rock, or a glacier retreated, which just means it melts, um, and that leaves behind bare rock. Well, that bare rock over time will be um, broken down into smaller and smaller pieces, which is what we call weathering. And then also you have little pioneer species come in. So those are species that can live on bare rock, so things like lichen, moss, and bacteria. And they will, as they die, add nutrients to that bare rock, which is gradually getting broken down into smaller and smaller pieces. So the tiny little pieces of rock add together the nutrients, and that gives you soil. And over time, as you get more life, more weathering, you get more nutrients, more tiny little bits, and then the soil begins to build up. And as we get a buildup of soil, we get more uh, different plant species that can live in that area. So we'll get things like grasses and then shrubs, and eventually, if the climate allows, then we'll have more trees and things like that. Secondary succession occurs when there is some sort of disaster. Maybe there is a fire or disease, maybe humans harvested an area, there's a hurricane, tornado, uh, anything that causes some sort of wipeout of the community but leaves behind soil. Then we call that a disturbance. Well, there's still living, like living bacteria in here and there's still nutrients, so this is still good, good soil. So it doesn't take as long for that community to come back. And it doesn't always mean that the same community will return. Uh, it could be a little bit different, but it's um, it doesn't take as long since you're starting with you know the, the bare materials. Um, I do want to say just because all these pictures tend to show trees, it, uh, the climax community is not always going to be a forest. It could be a desert. It could be tundra. Um, it's whatever that community is. So a climax community is really just a stable group of plants and animals in that environment. That doesn't always mean trees. We just show trees because it's, uh, it's a pretty illustration, but that's not always the case. So I already talked about pioneer species. They can move into the unoccupied habitat and um, adapt to, to the conditions, and that may result in a new species. So they're really just the, the first guys to mega live in there. Um, succession in the disturbed ecosystem will affect the total biomass, species richness, and net productivity. That just means um, what I was saying before, that every time you're going to get a different outcome. You're not always going to have the same exact uh, species richness, the same level of biodiversity. You might have more, you might have less. Um, it's just basically... You know, it's like taking a game of chess and just throwing off all the pieces and you start over. Every time you play this game of chess, it's going to play out a little bit differently. Um, so you're not always going to get the same setup. And then this is just tossed in here. Uh, indicator species is something that, based on whether it's there, based on how much it is, or like how much of it is there, um, how or if it's not there at all and it should be, or it's chemical composition, it tells us something about that environment. It tells us if something uh, has been disturbed and allows us to see just indications of the, of the health of that ecosystem without having to necessarily like know every little chemical quality about it. Um, for instance, with uh, stream pollution, we find that if there's not a lot of stream or not a lot of pollution in a stream, we have more things like little mayflies, um, but if or dragonflies, but if there's a little bit of pollution, then we tend to get more shrimp. If there's a lot of pollution, we get these little weird creatures called hoglouse, and then if there's a high amount of pollution, only things uh, like little worms can exist. So if we're seeing a lot of, for instance, some of this, but not a lot of these guys. That's telling us, oh, there's a lot of pollution in this this place. Uh, it's it's not good, man. And then, of course, if there's nothing, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty extreme. All right, that is all. Uh, 
in your notes, go ahead and describe ecological succession and its effect on ecosystems. And that is the end of unit two.